All right. So as far as what we have to do, really, all that there is is to set up the fire starter. There's nothing else really to do. I already have a good idea of what I'm going to do to set up the fire starter, so... Let's go ahead and go and take a look. So every other mech is more or less set up. It's not as good as it can be, but... It's what we can manage for right now, considering what parts we have. Now, I do go on, want to go to the store. I think we pick up that Lalorim 15 with the stability damage. Lalorim 15s are hard to come by anyway, so I, I, I would bet... We don't have any. Yeah, we have zero LRM-15, so getting a special one is probably not a bad idea. Even though it's only stability damage, which is not necessarily the best, it's something. So if ever we want to use an LRM-15, we'd at least have one. New weapons so go ahead and pick that up. Available. I don't really have any intention of getting this SRM-2, even though it does have a damage buff. It's not really enough for me. I don't really oftentimes use SRM-2s. And if I would use an SRM-2, I'd use it with another SRM system. Typically. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at that mech bay. Get the fire starter set up. Hopefully we have enough weapon systems, but I think there's other weapons here that we can buy in stores, so I don't think it's too big of a deal. But I actually like that paint scheme. I didn't modify it, but nice V for victory there. All right, let's go ahead and get a uh, refit going here. So we're going to emphasize the small lasers entirely. We have 11, so we'll definitely be able to put as many on as I'd like to put on. So literally we go with the machine gun loadout. I actually want to take a look at this. Now this will not do anywhere near as much damage. But I want to see what it looks like from a tonnage standpoint. Like how many tons would we have to work with? Then we'd also have to have the ammo for the machine guns, but get that. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So the damage output of that would be. 90 and then yeah i don't like that i think that's not a very uh, i mean people seem to like that build but you do a lot more damage with the small lasers i i don't know if i've ever seen a uh act you know a better machine gun i mean sure there is some and i probably just overlook them um but i very commonly see upgraded small lasers at least the way the game was before maybe they've changed it since okay and we save a ton by not having to have the ammo. And now we're doing 120 damage as opposed to 90. Alright, let's go ahead and get ourselves our jump jets. I like to split them up a little bit. That way if you lose a leg, you don't lose all your jump jets. Although, that being said, I might put the jump jet rather than in the center torso there, because I might go with like a heat sink or two. One heat sink might be enough. I mean, this is still going to be a mech that runs relatively hot, because we're going to be using it to uh, jumping and alpha striking probably fairly commonly. And that's going to be, what, 48 heat and only 33 uh, heat sinking. So uh, I think it's a good idea to have at least one. And then we can do four tons of armor. I might leave one ton left over in case we want to do another heat sink, but I will uh, up armor this thing. Go 75. Maybe 85. And we'll up this as high as it will go. So we have half a ton to spare, and we've maxed out armor in, at this point, every location, except, of course, the rear and the center torso. So I'm going to go ahead and get this up to 35. And get this up to, let's say, 40. Okay. What do I think of that? That's not bad. That's pretty good armor. And then we go with another heat sink, and that would kind of help from a heat efficiency standpoint, just being a little bit cooler. Pretty solid mech. Fairly heavily armored for 
the weight. We've got 680 armor. We could put a, a little bit more armor into it, but a full ton wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to me because really we'd only have a handful of uh, armor to put in the center torso and then it'd just be rear torso because we maxed everything else out. So I don't see real a reason to put another full ton of armor. So, and if we did a half ton where I wouldn't be able to fit anything else, that would be a half ton worth of weight because I have filled all the support weapon slots I can. Those are the only things that weigh a half ton in this game. So... That's going to be it. 10 days. Not bad. Alright, that's going to be it, honestly, uh, at the moment. Part of me has been thinking or toying with the idea of removing two medium lasers and putting in a medium pulse laser, but you would lo lose damage with the Phoenix Hawk if I did that. Ideally, what I'd want to do is I'd want to get another double heat sink replace one of my single heat sinks with that, strip a single heat sink out, so the heat efficiency would be the same, remove one medium laser, and replace it with a medium pulse laser. So it would run slightly hotter, and I know that's probably not ideal considering how much the Phoenix Hawk already runs hot, but it runs slightly hotter for uh, quite a damage buff. But, yeah, that's kind of like in the air right now. All right, well, that's it. That's all that there is to do in this system. So we're going to be looking for our next system. So what I'd like to do first off is check how far away this is. So it only take me 35 days to travel, um, but it'd be quite a few jumps. So we might want to get halfway there. Now we'd waste time doing that. But let's see if we can get halfway there. So half a skull in theory, yes, we could. A single skull would be kind of out of the way, but we could jump to here. Uh, how, uh, I don't know. That's maybe not the best move. And again, that's a lunar planet. We could jump to here instead. It's a desert planet, which is also not well suited for us. It's also poor with a small population, so the store is probably going to be terrible. Any two skull locations that would be ideal? Black market, mining, got a pirate presence. Not really sure what that does for us. Oh, so this would be a threat to us from uh, jumping and stuff. So actually, we probably wouldn't want to enter the system at all. Tempted to go to the half skull location. It is better from a uh, planet biome type. It's Arctic. Uh, it does not have a lot of good stuff going on here, but... The one downside we have is it doesn't save us a lot of money. It's 120,000, uh, whereas this is 210. It only takes 23 days to get there. I think we go with this unless we're really running out. Yeah, we're not really running out of time. I say we go here. We're going to Arn. All right, off we go. So unfortunately, um, we're not going to be using this time all that well, but our pilots will all be coming back, so that's the important thing. Uh oh. I don't have one of the things that we could be using. All right. Just got a power spike in the med bay, Samira announces. Must have fried something. The power is out down there. A few minutes later, Darius and Dr. Murad are discussing options. Major relay to replace it. I'll need to shut down every connect everything connected to it for several hours. We have life support and not much else. Darius asks, can we just repair the relay without shutting everything down? Dr. Murad frowns, possibly, but I wouldn't recommend that approach. We'd likely just be putting medbay's problems off to deal with later. We could power it down. I'm pretty sure this hurts morale if you do that. Or you could repair the medbay without a shipwide power shutdown. I feel like we have no choice because if we have the medbay um, down for a period, then our pilots won't come back. So I'm going to power down the Argo. We'll just eat the morale, which sucks, because morale is actually very valuable. Dr. Murad says, Yes, Commander, I'll aim to have everything restored by 2100 or 2200 hours later. Mirai schedules the power outage for the afternoon. With most of his systems offline, the Argo is strangely quiet. 
probably your imagination, but you think you can faintly hear crew members complaining several decks away. Samira and Darius play cards in the command center's dim light to pass the time. You blink awake when the lights come back up. Dr. Murad returns a few minutes later and says, All better, Commander. Red Bay is powered again, with only some minor warnings on the restart. Next morning, Darius notes that the crew really did spend the entire shutdown complaining. I mean, really, it was out for an hour. What a bunch of whiny babies. Although, I've had power outages and they're not fun, so... <laughs> Okay, let's continue. Got a new financial report well, we can get that back immediately, but as you can see, it costs us about 150000 to get that morale back. So morale is worth, like there's a financial cost to it, practically. All right, let's continue. Those upgrades you asked for are All right, let's go to the ship upgrades. We're still not in the best place as far as money goes. So I think I'm going to take a really cheap upgrade here. In this 90,000 upgrade. I'm just going to go ahead and go with that. Roger that Commander. I'll get the crew hopefully this planet will give me... It's not going to be hard missions, but hopefully it'll give me a little bit of money. Hey, Kobol. All right, let's continue. Firestarter will be ready in time, which is good. As a matter of fact, we'll get this upgrade done pretty fast, so that's nice. And that upgrade will open up more things for us as well, so... Good to see. Oh, you got the bull shark. That's cool. What do you think of it? I'm trying to remember what its special ability is. I did look it up. Oh, no, wait, it doesn't have one, does it? It's the only mech I think that added into the game that didn't have one. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it did. Most of the other ones do. Ah... All right, not decide on what we're going to do for their next ship upgrade. Again, I'm going to try and keep costs somewhat low. But we should have more options now, so that'd be nice. Right off we go. That work order's complete, boss. Top notch work, if I may say so. Okay, so we have opened up a lot of things here, but we can't do it because we need the beta pod. Beta pod is pretty expensive, unfortunately, so we will not be doing that. Um, this is kind of expensive. What do you need for the next level of thrusters? You need the improved power conduits. It's also fairly expensive. We're going to need those power... It's all beta pod, isn't it? Can't afford to do that right now. And if we get the beta pod, that opens up a lot of things. Alright, we'll just go with this then. Get the automation. Sure thing. It'll take a bit, but we'll get it done. Yeah. Very solid ballistic platform. Okay, cool. Kind of look forward to that one. What and if I get it. Okay. Yep, that's going to be it. Let's go ahead and... Like, we've been hovering at this a million point for a while. I just can't stay ahead. All right, let's go ahead and... And we'll continue. Shouldn't be that far away from the planet. Yeah, just three days. We're nearly broke, man. Yeah, yeah, I know. Stop b bugging me, Darius. You and your whining. I guess nagging would be the proper term for Darius. Looks like we've arrived, Commander. All right, let's go ahead and visit the store, even though we are in not the best financial position. Ooh, a lot of extra systems here, or uh, plus systems. Plus five damage on AC5, we could actually use that. I'll just buy it, it's not that expensive. 
New weapon systems available. Stability damage on AC-20, accuracy on AC-20. Ooh, our first LB, uh, LB auto cannon. How does that work? It does indeed seem like it hits like a shotgun. Although it is long range, so it just it hits multiple times. So it's that's a lot of damage for an AC uh, or an LB. Uh, well, it's an auto cannon five, but the LB five X. That's pretty good. I feel like we should get that too. I'm not sure who we're gonna put that in, but frankly, uh, I almost feel silly for buying that F damage AC five now because this is just better. It's sixty damage. So yeah, we're we're picking this up. I bet you the range is about the same. Let's see. Yeah, it is. There's no difference in range. So they haven't modified that element of it. It just it's, it's hits in clusters more or less. And if I'm New remembering the tabletop game, that is kind of how the tabletop game worked as well. If I remember correctly, I apologize if I don't remember that correctly. Uh, there's another one here. I figure why not buy it? Again, that's yeah. You know, it's causing to spend more money, available. but. It's fine. It's fine. We'll be fine. Well, it's good. I'm, I'm happy about that because that should allow us to immediately upgrade the Enforcer. Just strip out the AC-5 and put the, the auto cannon. Oh, we don't have the ammo for it. Takes a different type of ammo. That's simple enough. We'll just buy a couple of them. Equipment available. Just get that out of the way. One ton per weapon system we bought. I haven't had any problem finding ammo for these these weapons. So far, every system I've been in has it, so I'm not too worried about that. But we obviously need the ammo to be able to use it eventually. Okay, we definitely need money now. All right, before we... Well, let's see what the contracts are. This is only a half-skull planet, so we're not going to get a lot of money here. But it should give us enough money to get us to that flashpoint. And the flashpoint will pay as well, so I'm not too worried. Thankfully, there's a lot of contracts here. And that one pays really well for a half skull. Actually, there's two missions that pay really well here. Yeah, okay, that's nice. We'll probably do this one first. As a matter of fact, these pay fantastically for half skull and one skull missions. All right, so we'll probably start with this one because it pays pretty damn well for only being a half skull mission. And it's a battle and it's in Tundra. Um, most of these planets should, uh, most of these battles should be in colder climates, so that's good. Why we came here. You got a US USA 5 in your crate? Yeah, uh, I just got a coil gun and a, a tag, and I haven't used either thing yet. Although we probably could use a tag. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. All right, so pilots-wise, definitely want that. Training confirmed. You're good to go. Aye, aye. Uh, because these are less difficult missions, I'll probably get my B team uh, coming in, so... Probably use crack shot again. Mech warrior training complete. Definitely going to use Drake. He's getting there to the ability we need from him. Um, use truck. Yeah. Go ahead and do those two. Yes, commander. I'm not sure if Yellow Jack, yeah, Yellow Jack, is getting that much experience from the simulator anymore. Hard to say. Um, but my game plan with her was just kind of get her at like a, a relatively neutral point. Don't know if I'm going to use her in this mission or not. Maybe. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Then. Which pilots we're going to use. So we're going to do this mission first. Push for more money because we need the money. All right, pilots. Uh, so I would like crack shot. I would like Drake. I would like truck. I'm also going to use yellow jacket. I'll use all of our all of our B team, our entire B team, because they need the experience. I feel like we didn't really do anything to level her up, and we could have, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. We're probably fine in what pilots uh, what pilots are and what mechs. That, that seems to work for me. So we'll just go ahead and deploy this out. 
I'm pretty happy with our B team. Outside of Yellow Jacket, our B team is pretty solid. Jenner over Panther. Well, I figure with her, with her gunnery skill as bad as it is, she's probably not going to hit with much. So I don't think it really necessarily matters. I'd have to think about which one did more damage. I actually think the Jenner does more damage. This is 100 damage versus I have an LRM-10 and a large laser. I don't know if I have a medium laser in that thing too. I might. I might. And then if that's the case, then it technically does do more. I think I do. Command interface initiated. All right, there's going to be a stand-up fight, Commander. Your lance against the opposing forces. Intel says they're near your current location. Move in and clear them out. Good hunting, Commander. Live you're out. Coordinates received. Um, yeah, let's sprint. That carries us seemingly a little... No, I didn't want to select the other mech. I wanted to move there. <laughs> Coordinates received. Okay... Truck's gonna sprint on over there. Oh, that's right, you're in the Phoenix Hawk. What's the best damage per weight class? Are you talking about if I could have any mech or just the mechs that I have? Uh, because out of what mechs I have, as far as light mechs go, the best damage output that I have right now is the fire starter. Uh, if I could buy whatever equipment I would, I would just buy the more modified small lasers, uh, and, and it would it would still be a hard hitter. But yeah, you can't go wrong with a light mech with a Jenner or a fire starter. Panther is a good solid mech, but it also doesn't have a lot of maneuverability as a consequence for that. But it can be a solid mech as well. And that's pretty much your light mechs wrapped up as far as a uh, damage per weight class. Uh, other ones are going to be good as a commando, but the problem with the commando is it's a little too much on the light side, so it's hard to both have heavy punch and good armor, so you have to be careful with it. Here we go. And also, it doesn't come with jump jets unless you modify it to have jump jets yourself, which... I typically don't do because, again, if you want to emphasize that damage punch, you kind of have to do without them. Commander. At least in my opinion, you do. Uh, and in that case, uh, you can have problems in certain terrain. Just not being able to um, get into position. As far as medium mechs go, as far as damage, and if you're talking raw damage... Uh, I think you cannot go wrong with a Kentaro, a Griffin, Shadowhawk, those kind of mechs. Uh, pretty much what I tend to do with those. It's just I just load them up with boatloads. I mean, you've seen me do this build. Boatloads of SRMs and medium lasers. Uh, and you, you can do... If you get the modified medium lasers and some uh, SRMs, you can get above 200 damage. Considering we're talking about a 50, 55 ton mech, that's really good. Another solid performer is a Hunchback, in particular the medium laser one. That's a very solid mech. Uh, that one does, its default loadout is well over 200 damage. I think it has 8 medium lasers and 25 apiece, that's, that's 200 right there. And then I think it has a small laser, so oh, it just does a little bit over 200 damage, but that's its default loadout. Like, you could probably modify it to be better. Standing by. So that's pretty good. Uh, Centurion can be good as well. It's a nice versatile mech, so you have a lot of options for that one. I'm just going to go ahead and move in here and start opening up on that uh, flea. It's not got a lot of yeah. evasion. We can help burn that down. Now, heavy mechs, 
it's a little bit more open, especially as we have these new mechs. I, I don't know if I have enough experience because of the, the new mechs. I haven't been able to play them much. Uh, oh, and thank you for the, uh, the follow there. But I, I think the Warhammer is going to be a, a good solid damage output. Problem with the Warhammer from the default, it doesn't come with a lot of armor for its weight. Um, but from a damage standpoint, even the default Warhammer is got a lot of damage. Uh, so a lot of it's close range, though, so what can I do for it can be tricky you? to put all that damage to bear, but it does have a lot of damage. <laughs> And it could be made more so. Alright, Drake doesn't necessarily have a great move here, but we'll go ahead and... Um, you know what? Move him into the cover. Our Vindicator is one of our highest damage output mechs, so it probably should not be the one that goes first. Instead, we should probably try and soften him up somebody else. Yeah. Give me truck. Get in there nice and close. You're not that close. Uh, well, I guess that's going to be our move. Oh, I'm not saying the Marauder is bad. Um, but you disagree that the Warhammer is a good damage output? Because <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure where you, you come to that conclusion if you disagree on the fact that the Warhammer can have a lot of damage. Marauder, I agree, agree with you, but not the default loadout. The default lo loadout of the Marauder is actually kind of bad from a damage yeah, endpoint. So you have to modify the Marauder to be good, but it Mar Marauder has that potential. Marauder has the same issue the Warhammer that has, though. Default, that does not come with a lot of armor, so you do have to um, add that armor in. But it's fairly... Uh, I mean... I haven't really p played with the Marauder, so I can't tell you one way or the other where it's at yet. We got lucky on that salvo, by the way. Uh huh. Well, these are kind of crappy mechs left over, so I don't know if I really care here who we go after or how we go about this. I think I'm just going to use Vigilance here and go after the Locust. Special delivery. I think the Thunderbolt's a pretty solid mech, too. Uh, just like the uh, Centurion. The Centurion is very diverse mech. You can do a lot of things with it. Same thing applies to the Thunderbolt. The Thunderbolt is a very solid... Engaging jump jet. Versatile mech. And it's also very well armored. You probably don't have to modify the default armor at all. It's very well armored. Firing. But like once you get into heavy and assault class mechs, that's what, uh, especially heavy mechs. Heavy mechs are all about damage output. Uh, I would say from a damage per ton standpoint, heavy mechs tend to actually be better than assault mechs. Because once you get heavy enough, you kind of have to start worrying about heat curve. And it becomes more and more challenging to really push it and you start having diminishing returns as a result. So although assault mechs definitely have a lot of firepower, there's no doubt about that, they have a lot of things that they have to sacrifice as a result. They oftentimes are also very slow and what have you. So it is what it is. What can I do for you? But if we're, we're talking ch chiefly damage per ton, as in damage done per ton, I think heavy mechs tend to be actually better at that. Not sure, we'll do a precision strike. This guy's so dead. Marauder gets 10% damage reduction to his lance and the call shot bonus to uh, to mech with a master tactic. I have had a 35% chance uh, shot the headshot. Oh, okay, I, I get you there. But also the worm hammer has a extra uh, extra energy weapon damage. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see it? Now, one thing I would say is a Marauder wins the uh, one of the awards for one of the cooler looking mechs in the game. So it gets kind of a bonus there. Commander? I 
But, you know, that's a good thing about this game. There aren't that many mechs that are bad. And many of the mechs that aren't so good in their default loadout can be made into better mechs. Gotcha. Um, but there are uh, there are a few that are kind of bad in this game, but there aren't that many. That hits I would stay good. away from the cicada. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the urban mech, but some people like it. So, uh, you know, my opinion is my opinion on that one, but I'm just not a fan. Are dead on arrival in the current build of the game, aside from the urban mech. Yeah, Cicada for sure. Uh, I would say I would stay away from either variant. Uh, the 2A no. variant, the standard variant. I disagree with you on the quick draw. I think the quick draw is really good mech if you use it in the style of play that I use it as, and that's the hit and run style. Then the quick draw is actually really good. Any other use case, it's not very good. Engaging target. But I think the quick draw can be good. I used to think it was a bad mech, but it's it's actually not bad. It's pretty good. Uh, but you have to use it in that style. I think if you use it any other way, then it's probably not recommended. Mission successful. Trying to think. So, in my opinion, most of the other mechs have a heavy use case. I, I'm not that big of a fan of the hatchet men. Because I, I just, I think there's kind of a cap on how much you can do with it. So I'm not that big of a fan of the Hatchetman. That would be one that I'd say it's not really all that spectacular. But again, you could probably run with it. Yeah, exactly. As Kobo says, it depends on your play style. And that's why I don't like the Urban Mech. I like mobility and the Urban Mech for a light mech. It's, it's the same speed as an Assault Mech. The slower assault mechs. So I don't think that's good. <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, I think light mechs uh, kind of should have mobility or they should make up for it in another way. Okay. So there is a variant of the Hatchetman that Kobo was saying that is, is good. But like the default one, I'm not that big of a fan of. So that is what it is. But you could probably run with it. And there's other things too, like for example, I'd recommend different mechs if you're new to the game. Uh, like beginner mechs are kind of a new thing, like um, a great example, Vindicator. Vindicator is a great beginner mech because it's very well rounded. There's a lot of things you can do to modify it easily to make it better. It is uh, pretty forgiving. It doesn't run all that hot in its default loadout. It has pretty good armor for its weight. It's got jump jets, so it gives you some maneuverability options. It's a pretty good mech for a beginner player. Another good one would be a Centurion. Centurion, as I mentioned already, it can do pretty well from a damage output standpoint, but its versatility and its ease of use makes it a very good beginner mech. So those are some two really solid medium mechs uh, that I think are really good for a beginner. And they're typically not that hard to salvage once you get into like seeing the medium mechs. And you oftentimes start with a Vind Vindicator. I mean, I did. So there you go. Enforcer, I think not as much because the default loadout of the Enforcer is not all that great. Uh, it's got ammo endurance problems. Uh, I think its damage output could be better for its weight, uh, but it can be modified. But I, I wouldn't recommend the Enforcer for those reasons. Also, the Enforcer has paper thin armor. So if you're not careful uh, in the rear, I mean, I, I have changed mine, but the default loadout of Enforcer and the armor in the rear is just not good. So you have to be real careful with your placement. Um, we're we're going to get a flea here. I'll probably just sell it uh, because I can't envision using one. Although I kind of, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's one of the things you get from this DLC. Uh, we'll take it. We got the, the, this variant. What's the difference between this variant? This is probably the default, I would imagine. Or maybe it's not. Well, we'll find out. I mean, I'm going to have to set it up anyway. Yeah, I guess the Enforcer is somewhat straightforward. So it's not a bad 
beginner mech, it just it has some pitfalls in that regard. Like if you let an enemy mech get in behind you, it get it gets hurt real bad from that. And also if you're not careful with your shot placement, you can run out of ammo real quickly. So that's the one reason why I would say the enforcer is probably not the best beginner mech, but it's not terrible by any means.